All right, guys, so I'm going to introduce you to your first problem in projectile motion in two-dimensional kinematics. So this is a fairly straightforward problem. We've got an airplane that's going to be traveling horizontally. Okay, so it's got some initial horizontal velocity with a velocity of 115 meters per second with an altitude, so it's 1,050 meters high. Okay, so it's a nice problem. It's giving everything to us in meters and seconds, which is what we want. We don't have to do any conversions to start with. And now it says that the plane releases a care package to some people that are stranded in the desert. So we're going to assume that the people are right over here somewhere. All right, so now ignoring the air resistance, determine the time required for the package to hit the ground and the horizontal displacement of the package as it falls. So let's go part by part. First, let's go through and let's list the information that we have. Now, this is going to be almost exactly like a one-dimensional kinematics problem, except in this case, we have two dimensions that we're worried about, right? We're worried about the fact that it's moving horizontally, and we're also worried about the fact that it's dropping. Okay, so just like in your lab, we're going to separate it into those two pieces. Okay, we're going to separate it into both horizontal and vertical. We're still looking at the same information, the displacement, the initial velocity, the final velocity, the acceleration, and the time. Okay, but now we're going to have a table that has two pieces of information. We're going to look at both the horizontal and the vertical. Okay, so these are the components of that motion. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look at what we've got. Okay, the horizontal displacement, we're going to say that from beginning to end, we don't know what that is, right? We're going to start at the point of release. We're going to end when it lands. So the horizontal displacement here is asking for how far is it from the beginning all the way to where it lands. We don't know that, okay? The horizontal initial velocity we know is 115 meters per second, okay? Now it tells us that uh, it doesn't tell us anything about the acceleration, but we're going to assume that if there's no air friction, that the horizontal velocity has no reason to change its motion, and therefore it's going to continue with a velocity of 115 meters a second, which you can see in the drawing here. Right? That's going to remain consistent, that horizontal component. So my final velocity is 115 meters per second as well, horizontally. Now we understand that as it drops, it's speeding up. Right? But that speeding up is all due to gravity, which is vertical. Okay, so now we're going to look at the acceleration. The acceleration in the x direction is going to be zero, and hopefully you can kind of reason through that. If the velocity is not changing in the horizontal direction, then it is not accelerating horizontally, right? Now, we don't know the amount of time. That's one of the things that we're looking for, so we'll get that later. So let's go ahead and look at the y component information now, okay? We know that the displacement in the y direction, it's going to start up here, and at the end, it's going to be down at the ground. So since it's flying with an altitude of 1,050 meters, my displacement is going to be 1,050, and it's going to be negative because it's going down. So that'll be negative 1,050 meters. Okay, my initial vertical velocity. Okay, now if my airplane is traveling horizontally, is it moving up or down at all? The answer to the question is no. If it's not moving up or down at this point, that means that the initial velocity is zero, right? Just like in those problems where the ball went up and then came back down again. Okay, the final velocity in the y direction, so that's as it's dropping, we don't know that. Okay, we don't know how fast it's going vertically. We know that it's going to speed up because of gravity, but we don't know the actual velocity at that point. Okay, so we're going to leave that one blank. We've got the acceleration in the y direction. Now it is speeding up as it drops because of gravity, right? We've said that a couple of times, so negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And again, we don't know the time. Now the nice thing about these problems is that the time is always going to correspond, right? If I'm looking at the time from here to there, the time is going to be the same for both x and y. So that's going to be the thing that kind of ties them together. So let's take the information that we have, and let's see if we can use that to answer the question, which is asking for the time required for the package to hit the ground. So I've got displacement, I've got initial velocity, and I've got acceleration, and I'm looking for the time. So thinking about my equations, I'm probably going to need the equation that says that x is equal to the initial velocity times the time 
plus one half a t squared. So we can go ahead and put those numbers in. X is negative 1050. Velocity, initial velocity in the y direction is zero, right? So I'm doing this for the y component. Okay. You can try to do it with the x component, but I think you'll notice that with the velocity not changing and the acceleration zero, that any equation you use is not going to give you anything that you can use. Okay, you won't be able to find the time or the displacement with the given information. That's why we're looking at the y information. Okay, so we've got x. We've got the initial velocity, which was zero times the time, plus one half times negative 9.81 times the time squared, which is what we're looking for, right? Now zero times the time is zero, so that's going to cancel out. So I'm going to have negative 1050 equals, and then half of 9.81 would be negative 4.905 t squared. Now the nice thing here, since the t canceled out, we're not going to have to use a quadratic. We can just divide by 4.905. So let's do that. Divide by negative 4.905. Divide by negative 4.905. So we'll go negative 1050 divided by negative 4.905, and we get 214.1. So 214.1 negative, negative divided by negative is positive, equals t squared. So then we'll square root both of them. So square root of the answer, and so that's 14.x. So t equals 14.6 seconds. So there you go. Now you got the time. So now we can actually take that and we can add it into our chart. And we'll put 14.6 seconds. Okay. And now we can go on to the second part of the problem. Okay, so we found the time. It takes 14.6 seconds to drop. The vertical information is usually very good for finding the time, right? Because if we know one of the velocities and we know how far it has to drop, then gravity is always going to react the same way and it's going to give us the time. Okay, now if we're looking at the x component, okay, now we have the time, we have the acceleration, we have the velocity, and so we should be able to find the horizontal displacement. That's going to tell us how far before the drop point we need to let go of the package. And so let's go ahead and use the information that we have. We can use pretty much any of them. I'm going to choose to use the x information for x equals one half v naught plus v times t. You could have used any of a number of other equations. You can use the accelerations and the velocities with the v squared equals v naught plus two ax. Okay, that's fine too. But let's go ahead and put the numbers in. X equals one half times one fifteen plus one fifteen times the time, which was fourteen point six seconds. So, point five times one fifteen plus one fifteen, and then times fourteen point six sixteen seventy nine. So x equals 1679 meters. That's about a mile. That means that he's got to drop the package a mile before the drop point, before he wants them to receive it. Okay? So you can kind of see how we use both the y component information and then here we use the x component information. And we were able to solve for both the time and the horizontal distance. Now, just as a challenge, this isn't part of the question, but let's say that we wanted to know the velocity as it hit the ground. Okay, so the velocity as it hits the ground, you can tell, has a horizontal component, which we know what that is, 115 meters a second, and it also has a vertical component. And so we would have to solve for that vertical component using the information that we have. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's solve for that vertical component. So we want the vertical velocity, which means we're going to need to use the vertical information. So let's use the equation that V equals V naught plus AT, because that seems like a fairly easy equation to use. So V equals the initial velocity, which was zero in the Y direction, plus negative 9.81 
times the time, which was 14.6 seconds. So let's calculate that. 9.81 times 14.6, and we get 143, which will be negative. So V equals negative 143 meters per second. And so that's in the Y direction, right? Okay, so now we can put those two together. We've got 115 meters per second in the X direction. We've got negative 143 meters per second in the Y direction. So for finding the speed at which it lands, we can then get this side by using Pythagorean theorem. So we can go the square root of 115 squared plus 143 squared. You'll notice I didn't put the negative there because when I squared it's going to be positive anyway. So that will be 183, 183.5, so 184 meters per second. And then we know since it's a vector that we need the angle as well. And so the angle opposite over adjacent, so that would be tangent, so inverse tangent of negative 143 over 115, which is going to give us an answer of 51 degrees. Okay, negative 51, right, because it's below the horizon. So I hope that gives you an introduction to two-dimensional kinematics. Good luck with them. Rest.